In late August, China's Central Weather Bureau issued a high temperature warning. It stated that 17 of China's 34 provinces had high temperatures above 35 degrees Celsius and 8 provinces had maximum temperatures of above 40 degrees Celsius. As we have presented in a previous episode, many Chinese netizens believe that the actual temperature is higher than the official announcement. They have tested in various ways and found that in some areas the temperature is already higher than 50 degrees Celsius. Officials have now reported two deaths nationwide due to heat stroke. China is facing the worst heat wave since 1961. The man was crossing the street. The temperature was really high. That section of the street is asphalt and has melted under high temperature. The man's shoes got stuck in the asphalt. On August 21st, and amid a record heat wave, the China Meteorological Administration issued its first national drought alert of the year. It is the first such notice in nine years. The drought alert covers mainly the southern part of China, where moderate to severe meteorological drought exists with extreme drought in certain parts. Considering that the severe drought condition will continue for some time to come, and the hot weather will continue with less precipitation in southern regions, the National Meteorological Center upgraded the drought alert. Contributing to the drought are high temperatures and a lack of rain. Water levels in the Yangtze River, China's longest river, have hit record lows and much of the main waterway has suspended operations. Oh my gosh, this is the Yangtze River. I'm standing in the center of it. The river is not even as wide as the Han River used to be. This is Tianxin Zhou Island in the Yangtze River. Why is the river receding and receding into such a state? We have lived here from childhood to adulthood. We have never seen such a situation. It's scary. In the Yangtze River system, the water level of its largest freshwater lake, Poyang Lake, has dropped by 75%, the lowest level since records were kept in 1951. This is an aerial shot of Poyang Lake. Doesn't it look like a giant dragon trapped on the shallow beach? Many of the fish in the lake are turned into dried fish under the sun. Yet a month ago, the beautiful Poyang Lake looked like this. In Chongqing, a metropolis of more than 31 million people and located in Sichuan province, as many as 66 rivers and 25 reservoirs have lost water. The middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River, from central Hunan province to Anhui province, are closed to shipping. This round of extreme weather comes just before the fall harvest, a critical time for rice and soybeans along with other crops. As August is the month for rice tasseling and flowering, the high temperatures have made the greatest impact and brought extremely adverse effects as temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius are sufficient to wilt the leaves of many crops, including soybeans, which cannot be too hot during the flowering period. The ideal temperature should be around 30 degrees Celsius. The Sichuan provincial government has released news that there are now 819,000 people who need to be rescued for a lack of drinking water due to the drought and 47,000 hectares of crops have failed, resulting in direct economic losses of about 511 million U.S. dollars. Take a look, brothers and sisters, the big drought in Henan province. This is the peanut this year. In previous years at this time, they had already borne fruit. This year is basically a complete wipeout. Take a look at the corn. So far, there's not a single cob. All are like this. 
This is happening to our village's thousands of mu of land. Tell me how we peasants are supposed to live. It's really too difficult. Because of the high temperature, there have been more wildfires in Sichuan province in late August, burning an extremely large area. Some have even reached the neighboring province of Guizhou. Several Chinese media reported that in response to the drought in the Yangtze River Basin, the Three Gorges Reservoir opened its gates for a major release of water on a time-phased basis starting at 12 on August 16th with an average daily discharge of about 11,200 cubic meters per second. At that rate, about 1 billion cubic meters of water is released in a day. The water level in the Three Gorges Reservoir has thus reached a new historical low. In China's northern provinces, heavy rains and flooding continue. According to officials, China is also expected to face a severe situation of overlapping drought and flood conditions in the coming week. Extreme heat and drought have led to a surge in demand for air conditioners and a slump in hydropower supplies, putting huge pressure on the power grid. This has caused a shock to the power supply in the south. In Shanghai, China's most economically developed city, temperatures have also remained at 40 degrees Celsius for the past month. And on August 22nd and 23rd, in a rare move to reduce power consumption, the city shut down the landscape lighting along the Huangpu River, an important national landmark. Shanghai's Riverside Bund area and parts of the financial center of Lu Way, including the Oriental Pearl Tower, were in near darkness. Large cities now consume a lot of electricity. Power generation provinces like Sichuan have been affected by the pandemic and power generation must have been affected. If our Shanghai government makes such consumption restrictions, it will help ease the supply of electricity. Multiple provinces in China have imposed power restrictions on different industries. All factories in Sichuan, China's leading province for hydropower generation and currently the hottest province, have been closed since August 14th and the closure is tentatively scheduled to last until August 25th and this closure may be extended. Sichuan is a manufacturing center for semiconductors, lithium batteries and automotive parts. Chongqing, a municipality located in Sichuan province, is directly under the central government and at the same time under the provincial government. The two jurisdictions are working together to build a world-class trillion dollar automotive industry cluster seeking to become the fourth pole of China's manufacturing industry. The recent power outages in Sichuan and Chongqing have directly impacted the auto industry chain. Tesla and China's largest automaker, SAIC Motor, have informed the Shanghai government that the power restrictions in Sichuan have disrupted the supply chain and affected production at their factories in Shanghai. The Shanghai government, in turn, has asked Sichuan to grant special treatment to the Shanghai automaker's request. This sparked strong opposition on Chinese social media, with many netizens calling it inappropriate and shameless, at a time when tens of thousands of residents in Sichuan have no access to electricity. In Sichuan, not only is the industry suffering from power cuts, but so are commercial, subway, office buildings, and residential use of electricity, all of which are subject to rotating power cuts. Some people in Sichuan can't turn on their air conditioners because of power outages. A netizen wrote, We small businesses don't need electricity to survive? All of Chengdu has lost power, not just the Tesla supply chain. What is the consideration for your move? Now we are informed that the whole plaza area has no electricity. Let's see if we can keep one fridge running, because there are a lot of food supplies for the restaurant here. For example, we have about 20,000 US dollars worth of food in the fridge. It's making us anxious.
The government said that in order to guarantee residential use of electricity, no commercial use is allowed. I don't know how Chengdu can be so short of it. No electricity is available. And the weather is so hot right now. This year, it's just too hard for restaurants. And we have barely survived the epidemic with great difficulty. Now there is an immediate power restriction. July and August are the peak season for restaurants. And all restaurants are looking forward to it. Now it's all over. It's now 6 p.m. We're supposed to start doing dinner business, but we're told to close down and go home. It's really hard to be in the catering business. This is really a disaster. We're at our wit's end. All the stores are closed, you see. This is the result of a power outage. Tens of thousands of pounds of fish are gone. It took two days to get the dead fish out and bury them in a big pit that we dug. Yesterday we spent a whole day getting the dead fish, and today, again, there are so much more dead fish. Automakers, including Tesla, have been hit by a string of blows in China so far this year. Earlier this year, Shanghai imposed a strict lockdown that affected automakers' production and suppliers. In April, car sales plummeted, with Tesla's sales for the month plummeting 98%. In addition to the power restrictions in Sichuan affecting automakers and parts suppliers, electric vehicle owners have complained that charging stations have been shut down. Tesla said only two of its 14 charging stations in Chengdu were open on August 17th while the others were temporarily closed or had restricted service. Charging stations of other electric car makers have also been affected in similar ways. Provinces like Anhui, Zhejiang, Jiangsu, etc. are also experiencing tight power supply and have initiated all sorts of restrictive measures. For instance, orderly use of electricity, air conditioning temperature should not be lower than 26 degrees Celsius in summer, Industrial enterprises, especially high-energy-consuming enterprises, should take the initiative to avoid peak power consumption and reduce the usage of elevators below three floors. The most direct reason for the current electricity shortage in southern China is the rapid increase in demand for electricity due to high temperatures. While the low rainfall and drought have caused a drastic reduction in hydropower supply leading to new shortages, but there are also hidden reasons behind this. In China, hydropower accounts for only about 14% of electricity. Normally, even if there is a problem with hydropower, it shouldn't impact the overall situation of power supply. After the rational coordination of power resources, there shouldn't be a situation where the entire province of Sichuan has an electricity shortage, not to mention cities on the upper and lower reaches of the Yangtze, and even the facade of Shanghai has to be blacked out. The reason is that the Chinese Communist Party has implemented the strategy of power transmission from west to east. It means that the electricity from the many large power plants in Sichuan is being distributed nationwide, instead of giving priority to the province before sending out the excess electricity. At the same time, China has virtually no early warning mechanism for power supply and demand. That is to say, the rigidity of the system has led to an inefficient power delivery system which has also exacerbated the power crisis and thus the supply chain crisis. On August 18th, the official website of the Sichuan government stated, In fact, Sichuan not only sends out hydropower, but also buys power from other provinces, and at the same time, increasing the amount of hydropower to be kept in Sichuan province, and drastically cut down Sichuan's annual outgoing power supply. The most dramatic aspect of the major drought in southern China is the broken flow of the Yangtze River. There have indeed been high temperatures and very little rainfall this year, but they are likely not the reason why the Yangtze is close to breaking its flow. There have been many droughts in the 2000 years of written Chinese history and the Yangtze River has never been like this. The Yangtze River Basin has a distinction between rainy and dry seasons, with more than 70% of the water concentrated mainly between May and September each year. An increasing number of reservoirs are being built on the Yangtze River. Currently, there are dozens of giant reservoirs in the upper reaches of the Yangtze River, 
in the upper reaches of the Yangtze River, the general installation of the units of Baihetan hydropower on the Jinsha River was completed on May 20, 2022, with a total installed capacity of more than 46 million kilowatts, equivalent to the installed capacity of two Three Gorges projects. During normal times, reservoirs on the Yangtze River are in fierce competition with each other for water. Instead of solving China's electricity shortage and flood control problems, such intensive hydropower plant construction has brought about serious and incalculable geological disasters and ecological problems. They have cut off rivers and intercepted the flow of water. A study published in the Chinese journal Geoscience concluded that the runoff of the Yangtze River Basin has been decreasing significantly since 1900. Chinese media, Oriental Outlook Weekly, reported in 2013 that data from the Three Gorges Yichang Hydrological Station showed that the average runoff of the Yangtze River in recent years has decreased by more than 50 billion cubic meters compared to before the Three Gorges Hydropower Station was built. At that time, an academician of the Chinese Academy of Sciences told the media that certain people destroyed the country's water resources for some economic interests. This is a very serious problem. On March 26, 2013, the Ministry of Water Resources and the National Bureau of Statistics of China released the first National Water Conservancy Census Bulletin. It shows that by the end of 2011, China had 22,909 rivers with a basin area of more than 100 square kilometers. Yet according to statistics in the 1990s, there were more than 50,000 rivers, which means more than 27,000 rivers disappeared in China. With fewer rivers and less annual runoff of some big rivers, it has indeed become more necessary for artificial adjustment of reservoirs. On August 17, 2022, Chinese Vice Minister of Water Resources said that the Ministry of Water Resources has jointly dispatched dozens of major reservoirs in the upper reaches of the Yangtze River, the Dongting Lake System and the Poyang Lake System on August 16 to activate the plan of replenishing water to the downstream. And since August, the Water Resources Department has dispatched 5.3 billion cubic meters of water to the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River Basin from a group of controlled reservoirs. The Chinese Communist Party vigorously promotes atheism and preaches to the masses that man must prevail over nature. It does its best to prevent the Chinese people from reaching out and restoring the traditional belief that the nation has held for thousands of years. That is, that there is a higher being and intelligence above man that orchestrates nature and that man should follow the ways of nature because natural ways follow the will of the heavens. However, after years of planning and regulating the rivers by Chinese communist officials, it has come to this day that the Yangtze River is cut off. Can you believe it? The Yangtze River has receded so rapidly that the water level can no longer be detected by the detection pillars at the river's edge. The entire river has become exposed. This is the water level detection column in front of us. It's very deep, nearly 30 meters. 28 meters of it is all exposed. The current water level of the Yangtze River, including the Han River Basin, should be the lowest since 1865. How many years has it been since 1865? It's close to 160 years of history. This water level, compared to the same period in previous years, is nearly two stories lower. The annual water level used to be at the top of the fence. It's a stark contrast this year. When the wind blows, it blows away the sand at the bottom of the river. The city's water intakes can't get water anymore. Not a single egg can be intact in an overturned nest. A common fate we all have to face without a single exception. It's the flood season in August. The water level is supposed to be above the water intake, but look at the water level now. Nanchong also produces raisins. In the past, only Xinjiang produced raisins, but now we have them in Sichuan. Try it, it's very dry and sweet. Have you ever eaten raisins from Nanchong? This is Xinjiang, see? August 20th. Brother, have you put on your winter jacket? Yes, it's on. I have a thick jacket on. This is Xinjiang. Hey,
月之间，雪下大了。